Welcome to Honda to Flash Pro Training Part 39. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our flex fuel tuning and our traction control within our FK8 Civic Type R applications. Our flex fuel control is going to allow us to run a flex fuel sensor in our fuel system. That flex fuel sensor is going to be reporting what the ethanol content is going to be, and we can vary the fuel, ignition timing, and boost request within the ECU so that whatever the flex fuel blend is going to be, we have the engine running safely and producing the maximum amount of power. Now, in addition to this, we're going to be taking a look at the traction control that's implemented within the Honda Data software. It's going to be using a percentage of slip between our driven and undriven wheel speeds. We can use this in a straight line acceleration or for cornering. We're going to go in and look at some logged examples so we can see how the traction control is being applied, what we need to look for, and how we can go and move into our torque control tables to limit the torque production of the engine so it doesn't kick into the traction control as abruptly. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at our FK8 flex fuel control and traction control in our Honda Data Flash Pro software. This is gonna be rounding up the last of the FK8 specific training tutorials here using our Flash Pro software. If Honda Data comes out with new features or functions, I may add another video here over time, but what we'll find and what we've covered already and what we're gonna be covering in this video will allow you to have all the information you need in order to properly tune your FK8 using Flash Pro. So the very first thing I want to do here is jump in and start to take a look at flex fuel because that's the primary focus of this video. We're going to go here to new calibration. And when we have our new calibration list start to generate all of the files we have to choose from, we have to go and make sure that we're working with the correct year and the market here for the FK8. In this case, I'm going to be just allowing on the default for the illustration purposes here. So the 2017 FK8 US market is fine. We do have a bunch of other choices, but I'm just going to keep it on our first option here. We're gonna go down our list and we can find that we have some of the files here that we can choose from are going to be flex fuel specific. So if we're looking down our list here towards the bottom, these are gonna be set up for flex fuel already. Although I would recommend to not use these files and just grab whatever file you're working with normally, or if you're starting off here in the process of doing the full tune and you're starting off a 93 octane, you can always go into your mods list and actually toggle on the necessary things in order for it to be flex fuel compatible. So I would recommend just to select whatever file is gonna suit your application best. Worry about adding in the flex fuel parameters later. That's exactly what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna grab this option. So 93 octane, downpipe intercooler, improve throttle response and click okay. And we're gonna find that it opens up. So now within our mods list, any given time, if I wanna go in and add on my flex fuel control to an existing file, all I need to do is jump up here under our ethanol specific choices. Let's go here and filter these out. We're gonna find that we have our ethanol input enabled. We have our flex fuel disable code P2183 and then flex fuel support. So we wanna go here and turn actually all of these options on here, allow those to toggle on. So the first option here allows us to run a flex fuel converter that's gonna be converting the raw signal from our flex fuel sensor, which is gonna be in frequency 50 to 150 Hertz It'll translate that into a zero to five volt scale. That's what we can wire into our factory ECU under ECT2 input. So we're gonna find next here that we need to go and disable the code associated with the checksum for the P2183 code associated with our ECT2 check. So when we have our new zero to five volt scale input wired in here from our flex fuel converter, it can throw this code. We wanna go and toggle this on so it doesn't throw the code, doesn't give us any problems. Then the last option here is gonna be turning on flex fuel support that turns on a bunch of various features and functions within the software that are flex fuel compatible, uh, making sure that we have the proper fuel multiplier, our ignition timing, scaler, and making sure it's scaled out the actual input for the voltage to ethanol lookup. So we wanna go and toggle all these options on. So let's go do that. Let's click close. The first thing we wanna do is jump into calibration. We're gonna be taking a look at our specific area here. If we go down our list, we're gonna find we have our area here labeled ethanol. Within here, we find we have some of the details. We wanna review, in our, again, our mods list, the options that we just checked, populated all of this data out here so we didn't have to go in and do it ourselves. It also set up some of our other tables here. So we have an ignition table and a boost by ethanol limit. Now, the first thing I wanna say is as we're running various different blends of ethanol, so if we're going from zero to 10% ethanol blend, we'll find that that's gonna be typically the pure, uh, the petrol fuel that's available within the, the United States at most gas stations. Now, in different parts of the world, it's gonna have different amounts of ethanol that could be added to your fuel, but in the United States, it's anywhere between zero to 10% as the standard or the lowest. You can find that if you've wired in your ethanol gate, your ethanol content gauge, 
and your converter sensor from the, the gauge controller that'll be registering what that ethanol percentage is going to be. So you'll find before you put any actual ethanol in the fuel system, if you've just filled up at the gas station, this will be anywhere between zero to 10%. So we'll be able to monitor what that's going to be. Now, because we've checked this on here, ethanol input enabled, that means that we've disabled the ECT2 input so it no longer is gonna be uh, used. If we actually jump into miscellaneous, we'll find if we look down our list here, the- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.